Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, I want to introduce you to the rational zeros theorem, which you see right here. And you'll notice there are an awful lot of words. So before we get into those words and get all lost in the weeds, I want to give you an idea of what we're what this is for. So we know that uh, simple polynomials can be easily factored. And in factoring them, you can set the factors equal to zero to find the solutions or the zeros. That is not so easy if you have a polynomial like, say, this one, where the degree of the polynomial is greater than two. Maybe it's four, maybe it's eight, maybe it's 13. Factoring polynomials like that is tough. Finding the zeros of the polynomials is also tough. The rational zeros theorem is going to help us with all of that. Now, in order to do well with the rational zeros theorem, you first need to know about the factor theorem, which connects the idea of factors and zeros. And you also need to know how to do synthetic division. So I'm going to assume that you've got that background. If not, there are some other videos that will help you with both of those things. And we'll see how it all goes as we come together. Now, let's take a close look at this rational zeros theorem and see what it says. So suppose you have uh, f. If f is a polynomial function defined by an equation with all integer coefficients, so the polynomial function I have down here would fit in that regard, uh, then all possible rational zeros of f of x have a certain form. Let me in, uh, circle this word possible. This theorem is not going to tell us what all the rational zeros of a polynomial are. It's only going to tell you what they might be, what the possible rational zeros are. In fact, notice we also have the word rational, which says that this theorem is not going to tell us what all the zeros of the polynomial are. It'll only tell, me, uh, tell us about the rational ones, the ones that are rational numbers, fractions. Um, so we're going to get from this theorem a list, so to speak, of what only the rational zeros might be. So, so that probably sounds like, gee, this isn't going to give me much of anything. But let's see what it says anyway. It's actually very useful. All possible rational zeros have a certain form, plus or minus p over q. What's the p in the q? P, where P is a factor of the constant term and Q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Now, the constant term would be, for example, in, in this polynomial, the 9, just the number that doesn't have a variable. And for leading coefficient, the assumption is that all the terms are written in decreasing order of exponent, which is true of this example, and the leading coefficient is that coefficient of the first term. Now, what the theorem does is it's going to give me a list of what the, po the rational zeros might be, the possible rational zeros. And the way this works is this. You first of all have to look at the constant term, and you have to think about what are its factors. So we want to think about what are the factors of the constant term 9. What are all the numbers that divide into 9 without remainder? Well, we think through that, and I think we'll see that that's 1, 3, and 9. So those are the factors of the constant term. Then you look at the factors of the leading coefficient, and that would be the 2. So you think about what are the factors of 2. And that's pretty easy. That's just going to be 1 and 2. Now, what the theorem says is that the possible rational zeros will have a certain form. They will be of the form plus or minus p over q. The p represents just any one of the factors of the 9, the co constant term, and the q represents any one of the factors of the leading coefficient, the 2. So what you do is you think about every possible combination of taking one of the factors of 9 and writing it over one of the factors of 2, all of that plus or minus. So for so example, <coughs> excuse me, so for example, I could take the 1 from the factors of 9 over the 1 from the factors of 2, 
and that would give me the options of plus or minus 1 over 1, which is just 1. Then I could take uh, 3, which is a factor of 9, and put that over a factor of 2. So I could say plus or minus 3. So 1 over 1, 3 over 1, and finally 9 over 1. We take any of the factors of 9 and write them over any of the factors of 2. So 1 over 1, 3 over 1, 9 over 1, all of those plus or minus. And then we need to think about the 2 as a possible uh, factor of, of the leading coefficient. And that would give me a 1 over 2, 3 over 2, and 9 over 2. So what the theorem is telling me is that this polynomial, if it has any rational zeros, and notice I said if, maybe it doesn't have any at all, but if it has any rational zeros, it would have to be from, it would have to come from this list. And this list, if you count carefully, has, uh, in each case there's a plus or minus, so there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 possibilities. Those are the possible rational zeros. Okay, what are we going to do with that? Well, let's take this a little bit farther. Let's look at our polynomial and figure out what the zeros actually are. This list was only the possible zeros and only the possible rational zeros, even at that. Uh, we want to now find out, well, which ones really are the zeros. And once we find all the zeros, let's see if we can factor the polynomial into linear factors. Now, this is going to truly be trial and error because I have no idea which ones of these might work. What I'm going to do is plug them all in and see which ones will give me a value of zero, which would be a little bit on the tough side, but um, I'm going to use synthetic division to make that task a little bit easier. Now, I have no idea in advance which one of these uh, possible zeros might work, so you just pick one. And you ask yourself, well, let's say we, I noticed that one of the things on the list was a 1. So let's check x equal 1. What if I plug in a 1? Well, in synthetic division, you take the number that you want to check, and you put it in the divisor position, and then you copy down all the coefficients of the polynomial you're looking at. And you start the synthetic division process by copying down the, the, the 2 and then saying 1 times 2 is 2, you multiply up and you add down. So 1 times 2 is 2, going up in the next column. Minus 9 plus 2 is negative 7. Um, 1, times 7 1 times minus 7 is negative 7. Add down the column, you have negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Add down the column, 21 minus 6 would be 15. And then finally, 1 times 15 is 15, and 15 plus 9 is 24. If that had been a zero of the polynomial, then the remainder, by the remainder theorem, should have been zero, and it is not. So 1 is not one of the zeros. Oh, too bad. That didn't work. Well, guess what? This is truly trial and error. So if you have one that doesn't work, you just go pick something else on the list. Let me look back at the list just for a second. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Um, the whole numbers are a lot easier to check than the fractions. So I think for as long as I can get away with it, I think I will check the whole numbers. And if one didn't work, well, maybe I'll try the three. So let's go through and see if three works. Why did I check the three? Well, it, it, I just picked one. So I get... I'll try 3 and do the same thing. I'll put 3 right here, and I'll put all my coefficients right here and run through the synthetic division again. And let's see what we get. So we copy the 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Add down the column, negative 3. Then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Add down the column, that's negative 8. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. Add down the column, that's negative 3, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and that's a 0. So, woohoo, 3 is one of the zeros, and that is really cool. Now we just have to see if there's any others. 
But before we do this, I want to build on what we learned from the factor theorem in the previous video, in a previous video. And that is that if we've determined that three is one of the zeros of the polynomial, then that tells me that x minus three is one of the factors. So my function has x minus three as a factor. What are the other factors? Well, the other factors are all term determined by the quotient. Remember the dividend equals uh, divisor times quotient plus remainder. The dividend is my function f of x. The divisor is x minus 3. If I'm substituting 3, that means I'm dividing by x minus 3. The quotient is right here. So that would be 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 8x minus 3. Sorry, I had to squish that a little bit. Plus the remainder. If there's no remainder, then this tells that you've actually succeeded in at least factoring this a little bit. And that's really, really cool. So not only are, have you found a zero, you've also done some degree of factoring. On the next slide, I want to copy what I've got right now. So I have that f of x right now is uh, x minus 3. We figured that out. And the quotient that we got, what was left, is 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 8x minus 3. And then the question I want to ask is, well, if I found one zero, are there possibly some more? Um, and you know what? I, I bet there probably are. But you know what? As we go from here, we no longer really necessarily need to go back to the function as it was originally written. We factored it to a degree, and so therefore we can now really just ask ourselves, well, what are the zeros of the quotient that is left? And focus all of our attention here. And ask ourselves, what might the zeros be here? And this is useful because if you notice, the constant term is now different from what it was in the beginning. It's now only a 3, not a 9. So if you go back to our list of possibilities from a while back, the 9 is really no longer in play. So that tells me that a couple of the things that we thought might be uh, possible rational zeros are now ineligible. I can take them off the list and, uh, and not look at them anymore. Now I have fewer things to check, and I can just pick one of these. Um, I can pick anything that I want. Again, I still think I like the whole numbers. If one didn't work the first time, it's not going to work again, so there's no point in choosing that. It is possible to use negative numbers, though, so maybe this time I will check the negative one. But I only have to check this in the polynomial that's left, the quotient from the first division. So what I would do is I'd put my negative 1 right here and copy the coefficients of what was the quotient from the first division problem and run through synthetic division again and see if this one works. And maybe it will and maybe it won't, but we'll see. So let's copy the 2, and then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 3 minus 2, add down that column, gives me a negative 5. Negative 1 times negative 5 gives me a positive 5. Negative 8 plus 5 gives me a negative 3. And negative 1 times negative 3 gives me a positive 3. And sure enough, that's 0. Now, I have to admit that I cheated a little bit. I made up the example, so I knew that one was going to work. But uh, if you were doing this for yourself, you might have a couple more situations where you find something that doesn't work. Just don't give up. Keep trying. So where are we now? Well, if we think about where we were a minute ago, we had already factored f of x as x minus 3 times what I have underlined there in gold. Now that I know that negative 1 is a 0, that also tells me that x plus 1 must be a factor by the factor theorem. So if minus 1 is a 0, then x plus 1 is a factor. And the remaining factor would be the quotient we've got now. So times what? It is times 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. 
So I've succeeded not only in finding an extra zero, but I've gone a little farther and I have managed to factor it a little bit more. That was one of the goals, to try to factor the function f of x into linear factors. So that's a good thing. Now we can keep using the um, rational zeros theorem, but at some point, if you realize this, as you factor a polynomial, you'll get to the point where the polynomial, polynomial you have left is a quadratic polynomial, which this is. And we don't need all these fancy uh, new theorems to factor those. We know how to factor them from before. We can just use trial and error, and I think we can just abandon the rational zeros theorem at this point and factor the old-fashioned way. And if I look at this, I'm going to have to use trial and error. I think I'm going to need a 2x and an x. And to get that 3 going, I think I'm going to need to put a 3 right here and a 1 right here. And I think this is going to have to be negative, and that's going to have to be positive. And if I check that by the FOIL rule, that should give me exactly what I have. I believe it does. So we have actually now completely factored the polynomial into linear factors. Isn't that great? So looking back, let's see where we've, what we've done. We have factored the polynomial into linear factors. That's awesome. We found two of the zeros, but we didn't find all of them. Well, using the factor theorem again, we can find the remainder. Let's, uh, the, the, the remaining ones. Let me copy where we're at right now. So we have... And I wrote this somewhere else so I wouldn't lose track. We have that f of x is equal to, oh, actually, I better look back, uh, x minus 3, x plus 1, 2x plus 1, x minus 3, just like that. And to get the zeros, we could actually simply just set each factor equal to zero. We've already done that with the first two factors, you see, if you think about it. When you set x minus 3 equal to zero, you get x equal 3. That's the zero we got from there. x plus 1 equals zero gives me x equal negative 1. Set 2x plus 1 equal to zero, and you'd have to subtract the 1 and divide by 2. That gives me negative 1 half. And then finally set x minus 3 equal to 0, and you get x equal 3. Four zeros. The degree of the polynomial was 4, so that's a strong hint right there. And my zeros then, if I wanted to make like a solution set, would be the 3, the negative 1, the negative 1 half. And notice that the 3 appears twice. Uh, when I create a solution set, I only have to list it one time. But what we're going to do to identify that repetition is we're going to say that the solution, or the 0, 3, has multiplicity 2. Multiplicity equal to 2. That means it occurs two times. Multiplicity. So that's how you use the rational zeros theorem to, first of all, get the possible rational zeros, and then using that as a jump start, factoring to find all the rational zeros, and factor the polynomial into linear factors.